So as we approach the Gatton Locks, we can see the mules or tractor locomotives that will be attached to Queen Elizabeth to help guide her through the locks. And that's the, that's the important thing. A lot of people think the mules are there to pull the ships through the locks. They're not there for that. That's not their primary purpose. They are there to line the ship up to ensure that she's parallel with the lock side. pilot will be given instructions continuously to the mule drivers who are located on either side of the ship and he can literally say to mule driver on one side let your lines out uh, 12 inches and on the other side he can say to the mule driver pull your lines in 12 inches. By this means he can very carefully, very precisely align the ship with the um, side of the canal. So the lock gates are open for the first lock and we enter the first chamber and the gates will firmly close behind us. Once closed, water in the lock ahead of us will be allowed to move under gravity into the lock chamber in which we sit and that water will enter the lock chamber through sluices in the bottom of the chamber and so physically lift the ship.
also have another function. If necessary, they could act as a braking system uh, for the uh, ship by racing backwards and pulling the uh, hauling wires towards the stern of the ship, thus helping to arrest its forward motion. And as we get to the top of the flight, we'll have lifted somewhere around 65 feet um, above mean Atlantic tide level, and uh, we enter the Gatton Lake. And immediately on our starboard side, we will see the Gatton Dam. And remember, it's the dam that creates the lake that affords the canal to be in existence. Without the dam, there will be no lake and there will be no canal. So it's a very important structure of the Panama Canal. The dam maintains the lake, uh, which is 165 square miles. And at the time the dam was built, this was the largest man-made lake in the world. And then we head out across the lake, following these uh, various um, channels between islands. Now these islands, of course, are the tops of hills that were in existence and of course became islands when this artificial lake was raised. After Gamboa, Queen Elizabeth passes a railway bridge which crosses the Chagras River as it flows into the canal. Uh, this is a combined road and railway bridge, carries the main railway line uh, between Panama City and Colón. And indeed just behind the bridge are the foundations for a brand new structure which will carry the road and separate the road from the railway.
is the Centennial Bridge, so named because it was opened uh, exactly 100 years after the uh, Panama Canal was opened. This bridge carries the Pan American Highway, the main road that links North and South America. The bridge is a good height above the waterway and places no restriction on the size of vessels that may navigate the waterway. So the last two locks uh, on this Atlantic to Pacific uh, transit is Miraflores Locks. Two locks, a two-step, and alongside the locks there is a major visitor centre where coach loads of people come from all over to watch the liners and cargo ships going through the locks.
Towards the end of the Miraflores two-step lock can be seen swing bridges, two swing bridges, one over each lock chamber, and they're swung now, of course, off the um, canal side. Now this bridge, before the construction of the uh, Bridge of the Americas and the Centennial Bridge, was the only crossing between North and South America. is the Bridge of the Americas, built in 1962, originally named Thatcher Ferry Bridge. It was built at a cost of 20 million US dollars. Clearance above Pacific high water is 201 feet. Now this will not allow Queen Mary II to enter the canal, leave the canal at this point. But never say never, because the Panama Canal Authority have indicated that they're seriously thinking of raising the uh, Bridge of the Americas to the level of the Centennial Bridge, which means that ships like Queen Mary II will one day be able to transit the new Panama Canal.